All right, guys, so welcome back. Welcome back to another series. And now we're going to deal with a different question type, which is uh, assumptions. This type of question, guys, is really, really um, common uh, in the BMAT. And it's really important that you're used to the skills of how to answer these questions, which I'm sure you would gather as we go through these questions. But without further ado, guys, let's move on to the questions. So we're going to start off, guys, by looking at the uh, questions from IMAT 2019. And the first question was question 10. So let's read this together. It says, researchers have tried to establish regions for a recent drop in the catch of marlin near the Madeira coast. Uh, then it says, this drop, cannot, uh, this drop cannot be explained by environmental conditions. There was no significant change in the temperature or composition of the region's water. Nor could one blame the human factor because the size of the fishing fleet, uh, catch quotas and po uh, pollution levels have been strictly observed. The environmentalists then analysed the records of fishing catch of marlin over the last six centuries. This research identified that regular five-year periods of significant decreases in the catch alternated with a 15-year period of gradual growth of the catch. In view of this, the study concluded that the current drop in the marlin catch is a part of a long-term cycle related to fish migration and food chain bands. The which of the following is an underlying assumption uh, of the above. So this one, guys, let's actually go through it and we'll do this one together. So the, uh, so the aim of, basically, before we even go into this, what is an assumption? So... Basically, in any passage, guys, what you're basically going to be having is evidence, which is going to be used up to back the argument of what the person's trying to say. And with this evidence, they're going to then lead on to a conclusion, right? But the thing which is bridging these two things uh, is an uh, assumption. I'm just going to call it um, A. So an assumption, assumption is um, bringing two together. So, for example, um, I can say as a conclusion, we should all go to France. And then the reason or the evidence is that France has good food. Right. So but then there's an underlying assumption there. The underlying assumption is that the main thing you're looking for on a holiday is good food. So hopefully that made sense. guys. So with this type of question, guys, to identify the assumption, then you have to work out what the conclusion is, work out what the reasons or the evidence is. And then from that, you can basically work out what the assumption is. So let's go through this. Treat initially, guys. So when you see an assumption question, the first thing you want to treat is like a conclusion question. Find the conclusion, but then just have in your mind that you're also looking for reasons. So the first one: researchers have tried to establish reasons for a recent drop in the catch of marlin uh, near the Madeira coast. So that's just observation. What they're trying to do. This is just going to be fact. So as before, guys, we can just um, cross this out. Then it says this drop cannot be explained by environmental conditions. There was no significant change in the temperature or composition of the region's water. So that's just evidence, isn't it? This is he's likely not to be lying about this. So therefore, we're going to cross this out. Then it says, nor could one blame the human factor because the size of the fishing fleet, catch quotas, pollution have been strictly observed. Again, just observation. Uh, therefore, this is all fact. Right, so you can cross that off. So the environment is then analyze the records of fishing catch of mining over the last six centuries. So observation, just what people have been doing. So we can also cross this out. Then it says, this research identifies that regular five-year periods of significant decrease in the catch alternated with 15 years of gradual growth of the catch. Um, so again, research, this is uh, going to be evidence. Right, so we can just cross this out. Uh, and this is in view of this, the study concluded that the current drop in the marlin catch is part of a long term cycle related to fish migration and food chain balance. So, here, so remember, guys, before you normally told you that it, here it's not really this is the study's conclusion, this is not it's the person who's writing, uh, it's not their conclusion. Um, but overall, I think what the paragraph is trying to do is trying to just portray what is going on in this scene basically so he doesn't really have any opinion of his own he just wants to tell his audience the main message is what the other people are thinking so this would actually be the conclusion here so the conclusion is that the fall in marlin is therefore due to this um this alternation between growth and decline as he was talking about here right so basically can you see guys here the conclusion is basically what i just said and then the evidence is basically the research where it goes up and it goes down so now we just need to work out which one's suitable to link the two so let's actually write this so the conclusion um is that the fall in marlin is due to this cycle of um basically uh, growth and then decline so i just draw it like that and then um the evidence basically is that he was saying over here uh, you have 15 year so 15 year uh, of growth and then you have i think it was saying um five years of decline of decline right so that's the evidence so what's going to link the two so a there is no correlation between the fishing catch today uh, and the deep 
see stock of marling in the 16th century so hopefully guys you can appreciate that um this is just kind of random it doesn't really link the evidence with the conclusion so it can't be this one the fishing catch of marling around madeira does not depend on the condition of the water around the island right again this is, doesn't really link the two evidence and the conclusion this is random another way you could think about this guys is formulating a sentence so you see um um there has been research which showed there's 15 year growth five year decline uh therefore the the fall is due to the fact that the cycle is on the downward trends assuming whatever it, and if that makes assuming so in this case the fishing catch of marlin around madeira does not depend on the condition of the water around the sea so hopefully guys that doesn't even make sense right so that's another way you can also test these out uh, c climate change did not affect the temperature of the ocean water of the madeira coast so again the decrease in uh, the decrease in marlin is due to the cycle being as downward trend because there is evidence that there's 15 year growth five year decline assuming climate change did not affect the temperature of ocean water off the madeira coast hopefully guys you can appreciate that doesn't make sense so it can't be this one next the change in fish technology has affected the change in the fish catch again if you do that similar exercise guys what you would find is that wouldn't make sense but hopefully guys when you get to the last one it should start to make sense so well, now we're going to say the decrease in marlin uh, is due to the cycle being on down this trend because there's evidence that there's been 15 years of growth and then five years of decline. But here you're assuming the records are accurate. So that 15 year growth and five year decline the study's talking about, you're assuming that's accurate to then lead you on to that conclusion. So hopefully, guys, you can appreciate then that in this question is the correct answer. And hopefully, guys, you can appreciate then how to actually tackle these kind of assumption questions. They seem bad initially, guys, but as you do more of them, they'll get easily. Uh, they'll, they'll get easier as you go along. But hopefully, guys, that has made sense. And as always, we really look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys, so welcome back. So previously, you looked at this question, the first assumption question we tackled. And I really hope, guys, you've learned um, a lot from this type of question about what an assumption is and how to apply that uh, knowledge of what an assumption is to these type of questions. But now, guys, we move on to the next question, which is I'm at 2018. So uh, question 20. So now, guys, we're actually going to do a similar exercise of what we normally do. Read it together, pause, and then try the question out. And then see, but over time, guys, if you're not feeling confident, you will get confident, trust me, over time. And if you're not feeling confident, it's okay just to skip to the answers and uh, listen to me explaining it. So question 20. Internet addiction is about to be classified as a recognized psychiatric disorder. Internet addiction is characterized by a number of signs. Excessive use of the internet, angle depression if access is lost, isolation from friends and family, and more significantly, poor educational achievement. This should make us cautious about incorporating computer-based learning uh, into all aspects of education. And it says education should consider the long-term problems associated with extensive internet use as well as its immediate actions. And then it says, which of the following is an assumption of the argument? So guys, pause the video, give yourself just um, over a minute and be sure to be back after that while we're going through the solutions. Okay, guys, so let's do this. So remember, what we're going to do, guys, is an assumption question. That's the first thing we need to establish. So obviously, in your exam, guys, there'll be a mixture of all types of questions. So you just have to establish what kind of question it is first, and then read the passage with the um, with the aim of finding the assumption, basically. So remember, the way we do this, guys, we're looking for the most opinionated sentence, as always. Hence why conclusion questions are really important. You're comfortable with that before you start uh, with these kind of questions. And then just having the back of your mind some of the reasons they're giving. So internet addiction is about to be classified as a recognized psychiatric disorder, right? So that's just a fact, isn't it? Just stating what's going to happen. And then it says internet addiction is characterized by a number of signs, uh, excessive use of internet, anger and depression if access is lost, isolation from friends and family, and poor educational achievement, right? So that's just a um, fact, right? It, it is true that being addicted to internet is probably going to give you um, all these signs, then it says this should make us cautious about incorporating computer learning into all aspects of education. Again, this is he, he's making you think, isn't it? We, we we should be cautious before we start doing this. So this is his opinion. I might think it's okay, but he might think we should give it more thought. So this is clearly his opinion. And then it says education should consider the long-term problems associated with ex extensive internet use as well as its immediate uh, as well as its immediate attractions. So hopefully, you guys, you can appreciate then that we can actually line this above sentence off. It's kind of linked in a way, but this is the real conclusion because he's really being demanding. Education should do this before they implement this. So basically, what he's trying to say is that um, education, educationalists, sorry, should consider, uh, should put more thought into bringing, you know, the internet into learning. And some of the reason he's just given is because internet addiction uh, could result from that. Right. So what's 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 the assumption there? Um, 
So the first one, all computer-based learning uh, includes internet use. I actually quite like that because remember the assumption, so the conclusion is we should consider, before we implement it, we should consider if putting uh, internet learning into the curriculum is a good idea, given the fact that internet addiction is a problem. But then obviously you're assuming that the whole thing about computer-based learning is only internet, right? Because that's likely the only way internet addiction is going to result. So I quite like this one so far. So you'll highlight that. Um, students are unable to reg regulate their internet use. So just put that into a sentence, guys. So we should put more thought into computer-based learning because internet addiction is a, a real problem, assuming students are unable to regulate their internet use. Yeah, this one semi-works, but it's kind of irrelevant. I quite like A better. A is much, as a much stronger assumption than B. Hopefully you can appreciate. So I don't think it would be B based on the fact that A is stronger. Um, is a bad idea to incorporate computer-based learning into education. Uh, so education, so that's that's more that's more the conclusion, is guys. So he's saying that is probably not so much of a good idea. That's more of the conclusion rather than the assumption. Hence why, guys, it's really important you establish what the kind of question is uh, from the get-go. So you I don't think it will be this. Uh, classifying internet addiction as a recognized psychiatric disorder would help lead to a cure. So these ones, guys, rather than even formulating it, these ones are just completely random. Hopefully you can appreciate. Rather than wasting your time into thinking, oh, is this going to be an assumption? You can probably just rule this out straight away because this is quite random. It doesn't really link to, to the conclusion uh, nor the reasons in any, uh, uh, sh uh, um, in any shape. And so we've learned a skill there. So if it's completely random, guys, X out completely. If you think this could be an assumption, formulate it into a sentence. And if it makes sense, it probably is the assumption. If it's not, or if it doesn't do it justice, then it's uh, probably not going to be the assumption. And the last one, um, excessive internet use is the only cause uh, of poor educational achievement. Uh, so we should put more thought into um, computer-based learning because internet addiction is a real problem, assuming uh, excessive internet use is the only cause of poor education. He's not really assuming like that, that sentence, hopefully, you guys, you appreciate that sentence doesn't really make sense. But I think A, guys, is really good because it really links the reasons um, to the conclusion really well. So it has to be relevant to the reasons and the conclusion, and it also has to make sense when you formulate that sentence. That's why, guys, I think A, in this case, would be the correct answer. But either way, guys, I really hope that has made sense, and as always, really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hi, guys. So welcome back. So previously, we were looking at question 20 to do with internet addiction and work out the assumption of this passage. Hopefully, guys, that wasn't uh, too difficult. And if it was difficult, guys, don't worry. It's still early days. Hopefully, my uh, explanation has made a load of sense. But now, guys, we move on to the next question, which is I'm at 2017. So let's read this one together. It says, the recently appointed captain of the national football team has been publicly accused of adultery with several women, including the girlfriend of a former teammate. The newspaper has made a great deal of his uh, extramarital um, activities and it has become a scandal. His behavior has led uh, him to be subject of crude jokes. He has now been suspended from his duty. It is right that he has been removed from his position so that the team can start to pull together and have the best possible chance of winning uh, the World Cup. Says, Which of the following is an underlying assumption of the above argument? So guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, uh, just above a minute actually, and be sure to be back after that uh, where we're going to go through the solution. Okay guys, so first of all, it's an assumption question, so we've uh, highlighted that, so we're putting our assumption cap on. So the next, it says, the recent appointed captain uh, has been accused of adultery of several women, including the girlfriend of a former teammate. So this has already happened. We know this is going to be a fact. So we can just cross this all out. So that's crossed out. It says, um, the newspapers have made a great deal of his extramarital activities and have become a scandal. Again, this is just a fact. This has already happened, basically. Um, so that's a fact. His behavior has led him to be subject of crude jokes. Again, happened. It's going to be fact. Likely not to be lying about that. He has now been suspended from his duties. Again, already happened. Fact. It is right that he has been removed from his position so that the team can pull together and have the best possible chance of um, of winning the World Cup. So this is clearly his opinion. So he's saying this is a good thing um, because it's going to increase the chances of the team essentially coming together and winning um, the World Cup. Right. And yeah, some of yeah, some of the reasons basically he's saying um, he, he doesn't give real. He's basically saying that he should be suspended. Um, the reason is more or less he's just giving a negative so, because what he done was wrong, more or less, is the reason for all he's trying to say. Right. Um, so uh, let's look at a the new captain's action has weakened team morale. So let's formulate that into a sentence. So. He should be suspending to increase the chance of winning the World Cup, given that what he done was wrong, uh, assuming that 
the new captain's actions has weakened the team morale. I think that's good tying with the conclusion because if the actions have weakened the morale, then obviously if you kick him out, that's going to increase your chances of um, winning the World Cup. So I think this one's good so far. I like quite like this one. The new captain should ha- should not have been appointed. Um, that's just quite random, isn't it? Here he's saying he's not he's not really talking about why he shouldn't have been appointed in the first place. He's more talking about why he should be suspended. So this isn't really tying with the conclusion in any way. So I don't like this one. Uh, if the new captain is far, the national team will win the World Cup. So this is actually a really key skill, guys. Um, here, if you look at the conclusion, it says the best possible chance, right? So here he's saying that they might, if he gets kicked out, he's already establishing the fact that they're not definitely going to win. He's just going to increase the chance. So he's acknowledging that there might be other factors already. So he's not really assuming uh, then that if if they win, if he gets fired, they're definitely going to win. So it can't be this one. The next thing, uh, the national team will not win the World Cup. Um, that doesn't... Uh, so if, if you formulate... Firstly, he, he in the conclusion, he clearly says it's the best possible chance of winning the World Cup. He's not really saying anything about... Um, they they won't win the World Cup. He's acknowledging this. He's acknowledges there's other factors which might cause them to win or not win. So that's why I quite don't like D. His newspapers have the right to report on people's personal lives. Again, this is hopefully guys can be. This is just completely random, and this is why guys I would say A over here is the correct answer because it really nicely ties in with the conclusion. And when he formulates it into a sentence, it makes a lot of sense, right? So it makes a lot of sense because if you it, we, the cl- conclusion here is that if you kick him out. You have a best possible chance of winning the team, um, uh, winning the World Cup, assuming the new captain's action has weakened the team around. That that sentence makes sense, and I think that's a logical um, assumption uh, in this argument. So hopefully, guys, that's made sense. And as always, really look forward to seeing you in the next video.